All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about red flags in job ads. And I'm going to use my as a hiring manager perspective, because I craft the job specs right now, but also personal experience trying to find a job uh, in the past. Something to keep in mind before we dive into that is that, you know, there could be a lot of different cases why this is happening. And I want to preface this because it's super important. The red flags could signify that something is not right in the design culture or in the company priorities of how they present themselves and what they're looking for. But it could also mean some sort of broken telephone effort between the recruitment between the recruitment partners, let's say who could be outside uh, agencies, or it could be, you know, internal communication issues, there could be a lot of different things which you know, come down to this, and I'm going to try to cover and pepper some insights here and there. And I used examples from out there, which are live right now as of this recording. But right off the bat, the first one is this UI UX label. You know, it comes in UX UI, UI UX, everything in between. This is to me the massive red flag. It automatically signifies that what we are looking for is someone who can do both, right? But usually what it means, it means that it's more UI focused with some like, you know, magical sparkles of UX applied to it. And if you look at this job ad specifically, you're going to notice that it's all you know, it, it kind of highlights the user centricity and things of that nature. But the experience the things what we're expecting you to do is all about UI, even if it's just prototyping, there is no research in it. the next red flag, which is very relevant to the first one is that a lot of people are taking this old school web design and digital design requirement or what we're looking for. And they're just stamping a big massive like a rubber stamp of UX and saying this is what UX is, for example, we're looking for experience UX designer, right? Some Adobe, Jira, Figma, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it's everything and nothing. It's not really a UX job. And my pet peeve with these is they don't know what we want. They could just mark it as a digital designer, let's say, be super specific, because in reality, this is not experience designer, this is not UX designer. And that to me immediately signifies that you might struggle if you are looking for the real UX role. And the next one is a perfect segue, a specific percentage splits, like, and to me, that immediately kind of like, oh, they know exactly what you're going to be working on. And UX, let's say is a 50%, UI is a 40%. And when coding is 10% of the role, I love the precision of it. What I don't like about it is that the UX bit is really just another UI bit. I mean, it has a bit of interaction design with prototyping, wireframing and things of that nature. But where's the research? If there's no research, there's no UX. So there is no UX. This is just a UI role, ultimately. And of course, as mentioned, coding is always a red flag. Usually it states that you just need to know of it. So you realistically can design things. But if it says that you might need to do that 10% of a role, that to me is just like, nah, no, thank you. Unless you really want to do that. And you want to go into engineering eventually. As of a previous point, it's like you can skin it however you want. And um, this is maybe feedback for hiring managers or recruiters. But if it all is just UI design and you don't really know the difference of it or whoever posted or came up with a spec and just call it UI design with understanding of UX. It's as simple as that because this is UI bias. All of these are basically UI job ads with some UX unless there is someone in that company who is going to do UX like this is not going to be good enough to actually deliver the UX because it's just going to be a guess and some sort of experiment, but not really uh, experience or UX design as we know it. Now, the next one is a big one, because it's about questionable or unclear seniority, a lot of job ads you're going to apply for might just say UX designer, let's say, and nothing else, there's not going to be a senior or a lead designer. And this UX designer in particular has to have at least five plus years of experience. Now, why is this an issue? Well, as a candidate, you can kind of work backwards and calculate, am I there and try to apply for it, you can kind of read into the, the specs, you could be a senior with five plus years of experience depends what you did at that time, you could be midweight, you could still be a junior if you just did, you know, the bare minimum, and you didn't invest your own time. Now, if you're just a junior or midweight, or even a senior, and you're going to apply for this position of five plus years, your competition is going to be all over a place from very inexperienced to super experienced. If you just have five years of experience, and you think you're midweight, some senior could apply who has five years or 10 years of experience, and he's gonna get the job. So my ultimately issue with these if just timing of the years is that it doesn't tell the candidate and if a lot of candidates are not going into detail, which they aren't, they're just gonna apply and you might not get in 
because competition could be all over a place and you cannot predict. I have a video which I published the every week on exactly what you can control. And this is one of those things you can't really control. As I was just looking at the footage, I realized that I forgot one critical part, almost like an attachment to that a senior indicator or midweight indicator in the title itself. It has to do with the compensation. A lot of ads right now are going to say something like competitive salary band applies. In reality, this is a trick hiring teams are trying to do to get the best type of talent in the cheapest of ways. They might not even have a flexibility to address it as well, but the, just having a simple banding or knowing exactly what sort of mark you're applying for, what range you're applying for, adds clarity to everyone, to the candidates, to the hiring team, because they sit through and, and, you know, get just the quality candidates, you know, exactly what you're applying for. Now, the next one is um, very common. And I already hinted at that, and it's lack of user research. Now, all these roles of UX designers and product designers and everything in between focus on UI. I already mentioned that. My pet peeve is that the bulk of UX work is really very search for facilitation, getting those insights and actioning them. The actioning bit is the last one, which is that UI design. A lot of these focus on that last bit. And of course, within the actual company, there could be a specific capability, a culture of user research, which is the ambition embedded in, let's say, a design capability. So you can work together, but make it explicit, make it known. And right here, to me, that's just like, it's just gonna be everything to do with UI and then kind of like a guesswork UX design. Oh, the next one is gonna be a bit controversial by way, but this is who you report to. So in the past, I reported to marketing, to engineering, to product, to UX. I reported to a lot of different people. To me, this is a red flag. It could influence how you grow, how you perform, what challenges you answer and which you just live with in the actual role. Ideally, you would want to report to the actual, let's say, design director, head of design lead or senior UXer, whoever, you know, is much more senior than you, because then they can support you and unblock you and solve your challenges. There are a few different ads, for example, this one, ports in creative team, head of creative. I would be questioning, I guess this might be an agency. It could go either way. This one is specifically marketing based. And this one has a dual report track to head of digital marketing and senior marketing designer. Has nothing to do with UX. I would immediately be like, mm, okay, that's that's odd. You might struggle convincing them or them understanding what it is. There is a good type of example, like this one, for example, where you clearly immediately first line is head of UX. And this is super important. The more experience you're going to get, the more you're going to care about this. Like the first thing I would ask right now, if I would be applying for a job, who am I going to report to? Is it going to be chief product officer? Is it going to be a director or head of UX? Is it going to be someone like I need to know where do I frame and what challenges I'm going to face because that's going to impact how I interview and what's going to happen next. I can position myself well. Now, the next one is very typical with, let's say, um, agency and contract roles where you're going to do a lot of different things or maybe they just don't know what you're supposed to do. For example, this is a contract, 500 pounds a day, right, in London. They're basically just listing out exactly that you're going to be senior UX designer in a large retail organization, must have experience sketch Figma. So all the tools, prototyping tools, you know, redundancies here as well, typography, yada, 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 like very general fluff, random keywords, and like very little UX to that as well. But as you can see immediately here, you cannot really tell exactly what you're going to be working on. Like, is it mobile? Is it going to be decision support? Is it going to be data viz? Is it going to be some sort of colleague tools? Is it going to be a customer based apps or website? Like what sort of digital products or services are you actually going to do on the opposite side of a spectrum? Spectrum, as an example of how to do it right here, you can clearly see exactly which part of the business you're going to look at, like insurance payments incubation. You also can see immediately that you must have experience in app and web app products. You need to be familiar with mobile phone apps, things of that nature. So you can immediately know how to tailor your portfolio, what you're going to be expected to talk about, things of that nature. You can actually prepare for it and get it if you have relevant experience and you're capable of that. Now, the next one is also going to be slightly controversial, but a lot of startups, I guess, or agencies are expect designers to do everything. But I'm going to come from the angle that this is about UX. 
and UX should do UX design. Now, this job ad specifically has UI UX designer, again, bollocks. We are a startup and there's plenty of room to grow as a designer with a plan being for you to take a lead on every design aspect of a company. That sounds to me like you're gonna do some, you know, branding and prints, every other aspect of the actual collateral, but very little UX. Even if the actual ad calls out, you know, UX research methods, knowing that this is a startup which is gonna require you to wear so many hats, you, should, you just need to consider if it's worth it. And in the next ad, you can just immediately read what it says. You brief typeface, color, logo design, and love to dive deep into nuances, inch of how they can articulate company's brand, marketing design, and a little bit of product design. Where is the UX? Icons, buttons, transitions, yada, yada, yada. It's all about visual layer. Another bit here, which I was kind of like taken aback is to do with that seniority. And I guess a mismatch between the title and what's expected of you to do. So a massive red flag. But as you can see, you need to have five plus years of experience, but you are still midweight UX UI designer, but also they require you to manage other designers and third parties. So being like a great thought leader and a leader. To me, this serves as a role that has to be almost like a senior level. Like I wouldn't trust a midway designer to do all that. It's just like, what are you thinking? Unless you're going to provide the ways for them to grow into it. Now, the next one is super nitpicky. But what triggered me for a lack of a better word was work with the product managers and other members of a team to understand customer requirements and propose solutions requirements specifically i would presume that this specific role is going to work with someone like business analysts or product managers or a delivery team or someone along the lines but this sounds to me like the requirements are going to be given to the actual designer to an action and that to me immediately sounds like it's not really user centered or user centered driven driven approach. It's more of like the business driven or technology driven approach to use design thinking and produce multiple concepts and prototypes, apply pixel perfect attention to detail. So reading between the lines, this is kind of like a taking the requirement packet to a work parcel and just going prototyping, testing and seeing if that actually sticks. Where is the research? Well, the research is probably done by someone else but you. And that's to me is like immediately it's not UX. And there's so many more, but the last one, which is again going to be a bit controversial, but I pulled this one with this agile, agile, agile pepper den. Agile is superb and probably one of the best ways to deliver software to deliver products, to actually develop them and ship it and do it incrementally so that you are not wasteful because you can learn and iterate. Agile in UX is almost like on the opposite sides of spectrum. Like we as designers, we can assist the agile environments and we can work within it, but that fast approach and fast paced approach and failing fast comes at the price usually of the UX. I've seen cultures where it's done right, where you actually have continuous discovery and research going on while you actually product design and develop things. But 99% of the time it's bastardized and it's fragile instead of agile. This is something you need to keep in mind. If I would be applying for a job and I would see multiple agile principles, agile way, agile delivery, agile this and that. It sounds to me it's that the culture is optimized for the engineering and product, but not so much for the actual inside gathering and UX of it. And all of these things, what I listed out and showcased to you, you should kind of think about. There is so many more red flags there, and I might make a continuation, maybe part two of it, but these are the basics. If you have any other red flags you encountered, or you think I missed something out, or you don't agree, leave a comment down below, give a like, subscribe to this channel. And on that note, I'll see you next time.